Uh, Dr. Gary Richards and I developed a plant model called Full CAM. The CAM part, part of it stands for Carbon Accounting Models. It's a pretty sophisticated plant model. It has over a thousand input parameters. We ran simulations on the whole continent, on each 25 metre by 25 metre plot right across Australia. We, we fed in detailed maps of rainfall, temperature, elevation, soil type, crop yields. Now since I left, field trials have verified that our estimates from the office in Canberra were nearly always right within about 10% for any given site. So it worked really well. This is easily the most successful and sophisticated model of its type in the world. And our work established that Australia could meet its Kyoto Protocol commitments by doing business as usual, but merely stopping land clearing in Queensland. Why Queensland? Well, all the other states had already finished their land clearing before the 19th. <laughs> I'm sure you'll readily understand why the Howard government liked this message and was very pleased with our accounting section. Now, FullCam is also the leading tool for estimating carbon credits for plantations or native forest. This is why it might become a political issue. If you plant a particular tree species on, say, 100 hectares of land, where the rainfall is this and the soil type is that, and what amount of carbon is thereby removed from the atmosphere, and what carbon credit should you get? FullCam answers questions like that, and quite a few contracts have already been written that use FullCam to estimate the carbon credits. Now, remember I said that FullCam predictions were verified by field trials to within 10%? If you have a $10 million carbon credit, <laughs> then 10% starts looking pretty significant, and certainly enough to hire a couple of lawyers to go over things pretty carefully. Imagine the sort of disputes involving real amounts of money over things like computer modelling. Carbon accounting is utterly wide open to cheating, because it's nebulous and it's mostly unverifiable. We're just talking, it's like angels dancing on the head of a pin. You just make stuff up. I was a carbon boy, that's what I did. I mean, I'm not saying it's all made up. You make a lot of assumptions. When I started that job in 1999, the evidence for carbon emissions causing global warming seemed fairly conclusive. But then, since then, new evidence has weakened the case. I'm now sceptical. As Lord Keynes famously said, when the facts change, I change my mind. What do you do, sir? <laughs> you can't overestimate how important the ice core data was in convincing politicians and scientists to blame carbon for global warming. And it's all reversed. The temporal resolution of the ice core data improved, and it went back further. That is, the time between data points decreased. By 2003, we knew for sure that in past global warmings, the temperature started increasing on average about 800 years before the atmospheric carbon concentration started rising. Causality did not run the way we thought it did. It ran the opposite way. But given that carbon neither stopped nor started previous global warming episodes, you'd at least have to conclude that atmospheric carbon isn't all important in setting the world's temperature, which contradicts the sort of conclusion we'd drawn from the old ice core data. There is now no observational evidence to support the notion that global warming is caused by carbon emissions. None. And I said observational evidence. <coughs> you would think that in over 20 years of intense investigation, after spending $50 billion worth of government money, we'd have found something. The only current reasons we blame carbon emissions are the predictions of climate models, which extrapolate a greenhouse effect from a glass jar in the laboratory to the atmosphere. Now, I know a bit about modelling. Models are extended calculations performed by a computer. It's a mechanism whose rules are only determined by the knowledge we program into it. For example, before global dimming was discovered, none of the models included global dimming because no one knew to program it in there. Historically, science has not progressed by calculation and models as much as by repeatable observations. Some theories that truly were held by scientific consensus have turned out to be spectacularly wrong. Does anybody know what year the Wright brothers first flew a plane? 1903. In 1905, the Scientific American magazine dismissed and ridiculed the notion of uh, powered flights and called the Wright brothers fraudsters. That's the power of theory over, over uh, experimental observations. 
or there was a celebrated incident with Galileo. For excellent reasons, we have more confidence in independent observations than we do in theories. By the way, do you think that if there were observations that contradicted the idea that carbon was to blame, that you would have been told about them? Greenhouse warming due to carbon emissions should warm the upper atmosphere faster than the lower atmosphere. So if carbon emissions were to blame, we should be able to observe increased warming in the upper atmosphere. So people have been looking at the at where in the atmosphere the warming is occurring. Pretty direct and obvious approach, right? But the observational evidence from the tropics and some parts of the southern atmosphere flatly contradict what the climate models are saying. The hypothesis that carbon emissions are to blame is currently falsified by the observational data. If the scientific method were to be applied, carbon emissions would not be blamed for causing global warming. The current situation is not the way that science should be done. It's not science, it's politics. The notion that carbon emissions cause global warming is not scientifically defensible on today's evidence. If this topic were just in the realm of science, blaming carbon would just be another falsified hypothesis with no supporting evidence and attracting only minor interest from scientists. <coughs> but the notion has escaped into the realm of politics. People's salaries depend on it, and it's running rampant. And uh, I was on hand to observe this in the AGO. Before I talk about that, I'd just like to diverse slightly and issue two challenges to the carbon blamers. The first challenge is this. Show us your evidence. Make any evidence that supports the notion that carbon emissions are the main cause of global warming public. Let's all have a look. Now, just to be clear on what I mean by evidence, because we've had a bit of trouble with this in price debates on the, on the web, it must include the following information. Who made the observations? When were they made? What did they observe? In general terms, I don't want to see your raw data. And how do the observations support the idea that carbon emissions are the main cause of global warming? Evidence that will not suffice includes the following. Evidence that global warming is occurring. That's irrelevant. We already know that. That's not the question. Observations that confirm predictions made by some model. I'm often handed this as evidence. So what? They don't prove that the model is correct or that the model will correctly predict in the future. And if you find observations that disagree with your model, you just adjust the model anyway. Hey, I'm a modeler. I won't accept experiments in glass jars and laboratories that in any way depend, whose effects in any way depend on clouds, convection, feedback, interactions with oceans and so on. The atmosphere is too big and complex to replicate these features in a glass jar. I won't accept that someone else said so. That's authority. Independent, repeatable observations only, please. Otherwise, it's not science. So let's move on to the second challenge for the carbon blamers. Make a leading climate model used to make predictions fully public with all the working computer code and all the documentations so that I can run it on my computer. I want to inspect your model, see what assumptions were made. I want to see if solar effects such as cosmic rays were emitted. I want to run your model with different inputs to see what range of future temperatures it might predict. The world is going to go down the expensive and poverty-causing route of cur curbing carbon emissions. The reasons would better be all above board and open to public scrutiny. So I say to the carbon blamers, show us your evidence and show us your models. Wouldn't it be great if some political figure was able to say that?